Chapter 10 of Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved, by Father Francis Finn. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 10, in which Claude meets with his cross. Claude left the sign of the blue flag in the highest of spirits. He could have danced and leaped all the way home. The genial proprietor, who really loved our little madcap, had chosen him a suit of clothes, neat, pretty, and a perfect fit, for the great morning so near at hand. Claude would have carried the bundle himself, but his friend would not hear of it. "'You can trust me,' he said, "'to see that this package gets home before you. I wouldn't trust you with it, Claude. You'd be turning somersaults on it before you got across the bridge to Grand Avenue.' and by the time you reached home your new suit wouldn't be fit to wear in a baseball game claude laughed gaily and trebling forth the cheery good evening hopped out of the store people gazed at him with interest and pleasure as he moved along and no wonder a face at once so beautiful and so gay was a rare and charming sight i said just now that claude could have danced and leaped on his way one thing restrained him his right leg was still stiff and sore and his doctor had warned him that any great exertion might cripple him for a week so claude limited his expressions of jubilation to hopping now and then upon his left foot and to snapping his fingers in the air he had gone two squares beyond the bridge when his happy sunny face caught the attention of a lady in deep mourning her sad face lighted tenderly as she gazed upon the lad, and a look of wistfulness and infinite longing came into her eyes. He caught her gaze and smiled. The lady with the strange pathos upon her features advanced to Claude and, bending down, said in trembling tones, "'Permit me, my dear,' and she pinned a rosebud upon his lawn-tennis shirt, while claude awed by her face watched her in wonder then the lady touched his forehead lightly with her lips and turned away with a sob to think of her own little boy who lay under the green grass out by the soldier's home he ceased hopping for fully two squares then as he went past the public library and found himself on that part of the avenue where the residence portion begins and where in consequence the streets are not so thronged he broke into a merry song claude had a sweet voice and in the fullness of his joy he sang with an abandon that gave his notes the freshness and spontaneity of a bird by and by he left the avenue and taking one of the by streets turned north he had gone but half a square when a pair of hands were clapped rudely over his eyes each of his arms was seized, and he was forced along, whither he knew not. Claude kicked and plunged wildly. "'Grab his legs!' whispered the one whose hands were over Claude's eyes, in a voice that seemed familiar. Claude gave a cry of pain as one of his captors, in grasping him by the legs, bore heavily upon the part so lately injured. He said no more for a hand was placed over his mouth although he could see nothing he had already discovered that his assailants were three in number secondly that they were large boys thirdly that two of them were smoking cigars presently he heard the sound of a door opening and he could feel that they had passed in out of the open air and that his captors were carrying him up a flight of steps a moment later the hands were removed from his eyes and turning he found himself face to face with worden worden it may be remarked had been expelled from college two weeks previous for reasons that were not given out to the students claude had a quick eye and was a minute observer he took in at a glance the fact that they were in the hayloft of the stable that one half of the roomy loft was piled with hay, while the other half, where they were now grouped together, was bare, save for a few wisps of hay upon the floor, a three-pronged pitchfork, and upon a shelf near the entrance to the loft a coal-oil can, a curry-comb, and an empty candlestick. With his back to the door, 
a smile of triumph and malignity upon his face stood worden and on either side of him two callow youths with pimpled faces who were both puffing away at cigars the group thus fronting innocence would have made an excellent study for the three disgraces their costume is not worth describing take the fashionable dress of the time imagine that fashion carried to the point of extravagance the colours to flashiness and the picture is complete take care not to drop those cigars up here fellows said worden in a low voice claude heard the remark and treasured it up now monkey i've got you he added leering at his victim and i'm going to make you pay up for your impudence claude said nothing he had folded his arms and stood gazing steadily into worden's eyes slap him over worden said the longer-legged of the trio stick his head in the hay and hold him there for an hour said the other claude felt in his heart that his faults were coming home to roost in pure lightness of heart and thoughtlessness he had taken many liberties with worden during the few weeks they had been together at school frank elmwood and rob collins had warned him time and time again to keep clear of the bully but he had not appreciated the advice he had dared the lion and now he stood face to face with him in his den no said worden in answer to these suggestions we'll have some fun out of the monkey first and then i'll fix him so's he'll remember me till he dies his face was very cruel as he spoke claude still said nothing without appearing to do so he took note of everything within reach there were sharp pains shooting through his injured leg but he was too busy with contriving to give them thought he noticed now that there was a buggy whip behind the door and that a large window at his side looked out upon the lawn below the whip was beyond his reach to jump from the window meant a broken limb at the very least he said a prayer to saint joseph for light another to his angel guardian for protection and yet he was not terrified claude had come free of many a danger had faced and escaped many a peril his recklessness it is scarcely any exaggeration to say had brought him to such a habit of living that he might be said in a certain sense to carry his life in his hands horses had run away with him vehicles had been within an ace of running over his body men had chased him in anger yet in all his little experience he had never been brought to such a pass as the present but in such a crisis to saint joseph and his angel had he ever confided his personal safety and to his angel and saint joseph did he now look monkey continued worden perform some of your monkey tricks for us claude still faced him in silence do you understand show us what you can do come on you can begin with a handspring i'll not said claude checking as well as he could his rising anger is that the way you speak to me you vile little sneak you're a bully said claude the hot anger flushing his face worden sprang forward and with his open palm struck him a blow over the eye that sent the boy to the floor he arose with the stinging pains in his leg redoubled in their intensity now will you be civil and do as you're told continued worden his face very grim and an ugly light in his eyes no said claude and he meant it such a cruel fate as the little lad gazed upon cruelty is a mystery and its father is a mystery there is a certain class of sins that gradually blinds the mind enfeebles the will and forces out of even the youthful heart every spark of kindness and of love 
there is a certain class of sins which strikes like a frost upon the heart blights every bud of promise and puts forth in place thereof the weeds of selfishness and cruelty claude saw the effects of such sins he knew nothing of the cause he had never before seen to what awful depths cruelty could go to him these faces were as much a mystery as is life to the student of science now he stood face to face with sin in its hideous consequences he the pure the innocent the devout with the cleansing waters of sacramental absolution still fresh upon his spirit here you have a picture with two sides my young reader sin on one sinlessness on the other yours it must be to choose claude did not perceive the force of this picture for he did not understand all that lay behind the cruelty of those faces but later on as this narrative unfolds he saw the same picture again in clearer light in other circumstances and he understood it worden took the buggy whip from behind the door now sir if you don't obey i'll horsewhip you till the blood comes what do you want me to do asked claude begin by turning a handspring very well let me start from the door there and claude stepped over till he was near the door against which worden was leaning looking straight ahead of him as though measuring the distance he took two steps forward then raised his arm in the air as if about to spring suddenly both arms flew out one to his right one to his left and while one hand snatched the lighted cigar from the long-legged young man's mouth the other seized the coal-oil can and before a single one of the lookers-on could realize what had come to pass claude was standing beside the hay cigar in one hand held just directly over the hay where the inverted can was soaking it with coal oil and in the same instant for it all came about in a flash he shouted out if one of you moves a step i'll drop this cigar End of chapter ten